Over 50 of my students have successfully taken and passed the ISC Square CC exam, but I got two people reach out to me telling me that they failed the exam. And when I tried finding out why they failed the exam or what the experience was like, I noticed that some of these things which I'm going to mention in this video was some of the things they did or failed to do, which was why they failed that particular exam. And without wasting more time, let's just get started. I'm Emmanuel. For those that are new here, I share cybersecurity videos. Uh, it could be career related videos. It could be tutorial solving a particular problem. It could be awareness videos just for online safety awareness. So everything security and maybe a bit of tech is what I do on this channel. So if it's something you are um, interested in, please don't forget to just click on that subscribe button. Without wasting much time, let's get started. So the first reason most people feel this cybersecurity ISC square exam is because some people feel they've gone through other resources that are out there. They've gone through trainings, they've gone through tutorials, and that is sufficient that they don't need to go through ISC square training or the videos for that particular certification exam. Well, you are wrong if you are doing that. So if you do that, you would most likely struggle with the exam or you would most likely fail the exam. So it's advisable to go through the resources that have been provided. Um, yes, it's for those that have some experience writing Home to IA Security Plus, then this might be an easy exam, but still you might see yourself failing because there's one thing that they call ISC Square Ethics, which is a very important part, and you get to see about five questions or more relating to that. And if you don't know about it, if you didn't go through their training portal, through their training resources, then you would most likely miss or fill every question related to ethics. So you really want to go, you really want to take your time to go through the training resources. If you already have the knowledge before that, go just skim through, but you don't want to miss it. You don't want to skip it. So the second reason why most people fail this exam is because most people are sort of excited or should I say overly excited and they don't get to read the exam instructions before starting. They're like, oh, it's something, I mean, I've written exams before and they just keep going immediately or based on what people told them and they don't know if certain things have changed in the exam because in the space of three months, I noticed that the exam have been tweaked one way or the other. So you might you might not read the question carefully and then it will end up affecting you. Someone told me that this was his case. So what the person did was that the person thought he could go back and answer the questions that the person has skipped. But what the person didn't know is that for the ISC square exam, as at the moment or as at this time, you cannot go back to a question that you have already skipped. If you skip it, you've missed it. So this was what happened to the person. He skipped till he got to the end. And he skipped more than half the question before noticing that he could not go back. And yeah, this was what made him feel. So you really need to read the questions carefully before attempting or before starting. So still speaking on this, another tip I want to give you is that if you don't know or if a particular question is seeming quite difficult, just select what you think is the answer and move forward. Don't spend your time at the earlier questions because what I've noticed about their exam strategy is that the questions that come earlier are way more difficult than the ones that come later on. So if you spend your time or if you consume more than half your time at the beginning part or the earlier part of this exam, you would see that you don't have sufficient time at the end to even attempt the questions that are actually easy. So you do not want to waste your time at the earlier questions. Once you've, you've looked at the options, You've seen, oh, um, is it that A or B? So you've seen two options after eliminating two wrong options. You've seen two that are almost right. Just, I mean, just go for the one your mind tells you it is. I mean, that's if you don't know it or if you're not sure or if it's tricky, uh, the way ISC square exams are, just go for one. Don't spend your time rereading and rereading. You will just end up exhausting your time. So you also need to be careful about questions that have two similar answers. So yes, the way ISC Square sets their exams, you could see an option that you feel this or two of these answers are correct, but what they expect from you is the best answer. So let me give you a scenario. Let me give you an example. This was one of the questions, or this is one of the questions you could see. Which of these is a threat actor? So the first option A was a CISO, that's CISO. The second option was an ethical hacker. The third option was a script kiddie. The fourth option was a gray hat hacker. So the first was a CISO, the second was an ethical hacker, the third was a script kiddie, 
and the fourth was a gray hat hacker. So let's pause at this point. What do you think the answer is in the comment section? Just quickly type it. Don't look at anyone else's answer. Just type it and then let's see if you're correct or wrong. So I assume you're done typing your answer. If you're not done, you can pause it if you don't want the spoilers. But um, what happens is that if you look at this question carefully, you would notice that there are two possible answers to these questions of a threat actor or, with, or the one that is a threat actor. And obviously, a CISO is not a threat actor, but not everyone knows what a CISO is or who a CISO is. So they didn't put the full meaning of a CISO. So if you don't know who a CISO is, you might most likely select that answer. Then the next one was ethical hacker. So obviously, everyone knows an ethical hacker is not a threat actor. So I mean, that's a bonus. You've eliminated one. Then the next one is a script kiddie, which is mostly common or most people would assume that that is the answer. And then the last one, which is gray hat hacker. So if you were to choose, I'm sure, or based on your choice, I'm sure you either choose the gray hat hacker or the script kiddie. So if you chose the gray hat hacker, you would be wrong. So yes, you would be wrong because technically those two answers are correct, but based on the exam strategy, the correct answer is a script kiddie. So the reason for choosing a script kiddie over the gray hat hacker typically lies in the context of the threat actor classification. So the way we classify threat actors. So a script kiddie is a term often used specially or specifically to describe a type of threat actor who poses a risk uh, due to their intent to cause harm, even if they lack deep technical knowledge. So they use pre pre-made tools to exploit systems without understanding them and often for malicious purposes like vandalism or disruption. So you you just you are interested in hacking and you you just pick up a tool, you pick up a script, you want to see oh what's with this, how would I be successful in doing this in uh, um, in taking down this server. So they just test stuff without actually bearing in mind the consequences. So they have been tagged as threat actors, even in anywhere you go to so any resource you pick up, script kiddies are threat actors. Now, for the gray hat hacker, on the other hand, this one sort of operates in a more ambiguous ethical space. And what do I mean by this? So while they may sometimes engage in some unauthorized uh, um, activities, their intent is not typically malicious. So they often aim to improve security by exposing vulnerabilities. So they could typically hack your your API or your website and then they tell you, oh, I just wanted to show you that it's possible. And then they will send you an email responsibly telling you that, oh, I was able to hack this and I don't mind if you give me some money so that I will just help you do more tests and then show you where you are lacking in terms of exposure or where you are vulnerable. So this is what they typically do. They don't so much don't have that malicious intent in mind and they are actually professionals. So compared to script kiddies who have no major skill, they just use scripts. So you know one is more dangerous than the other in terms of the kind of damage that could happen. So that is the answer they expect and that is what they expect you to think about. So I'm sure looking at such a question in an exam, you want to spend five minutes. Oh, what is this? What is this? What is that? So if you, again, if you're in that situation, just pick the one that you think is the best answer and move on so that you don't spend five minutes on a question. So um, if you've enjoyed what you've heard so far, please leave a like on this video so that YouTube will recommend this to other people. And you can also share this to your colleagues, your friends that you know wants to write this exam. So the third reason most people fail this exam is because they don't really concentrate on the domains that are harder for them. So we know that ISC Square exam has about six domains, six different domains, um, just like Security Plus that has maybe six domains also or seven domains. But ISC Square has five different domains where they talk about different cybersecurity and concepts or topics. The one most people struggle with is usually the security principles, which is the first one, and then the last module or the last topic, which is security operations. So if you find yourself struggling with concepts relating to this, you need to put more effort learning those things because when you get to the exam, you would not escape it. So if I'm not mistaken, the security principles part of the uh, exam has the most questions. It has 21% of the questions that you would see. So it's something you need to um, take your time. If you don't know it, just keep practicing, keep trying questions relating to those domains 
until you're satisfied before you write the exam. So finally, the reason some people were successful and some people failed was because they didn't have the right resources for the exam. So aside the in-training questions that you would see on the ISC Square platforms, you need to have access to some other uh, past questions that would help you, even though it's not an ISC Square uh, past question, CC past question, but what it does is that it helps you prepare for the exam. It helps you work on your time, your speed in answering questions. And also when you practice more and more questions, you just get familiar with whatever will come in. So most of the exams we see these days, especially all these multiple choice questions are old questions, are questions that will just be changed or it will just, they will just make it look a bit difficult. But when you practice more and more, it will become easier for you. So I have, I think you, it's difficult to see free ISC Square exam pra practice questions out there. Um, but I have one that is really good that my students have used. So I would um, put a link for that practice question in the description for you to go, you can access it there. So all you need to do is once you click on the link, it takes you there, you can access it. I, I think for now it's, it's less than a dollar but yeah, who knows it could increase but you can access it less than a dollar so i just wanted you to be at a giveaway price or giveaway it basically costs nothing so just go put in your email and then go ahead get your past question or get a past question practice 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 and just a bonus uh, i just remember this as i was recording it was not even part of my script please and uh, please for those beginners or for those that are trying to get into cyber security and this is the exam you are considering it's good, but please um, have enough time to learn. Don't just rush to write the exam because you're trying to get a job and then you just want to get the exam or because everyone is writing the exam. You need to practice so that you don't feel because once you feel, I think you won't be allowed to try again after a certain amount of time without paying money or without doing some other tricks, which I mean, it's not what I'm here to discuss. So. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please and please don't forget to subscribe. Share this video to those that will find it useful for your colleagues that are writing this exam. I'm sure they would appreciate it in the end. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.